QuickBooks Online 2021 Customer Sales Revenue or Accounts Receivable AR Cycle. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Google search page. We're going to be searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. Then we're going to be clicking on the QuickBooks Online Test Drive for Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks, verifying that we are not a robot and continue. Here we are in our Craig's Design and Landscaping Services practice file. We're going to hit the new button on the left hand side. Last time or in the prior section, we took a look at the items under the vendor section. Now we're going to be taking a look at the items under the customers section. Remember that every business transaction has two sides to it, but we want to know what side we're talking about when we're using the terminology for QuickBooks. So for QuickBooks, when we say customers, we don't mean us as the customers of other people, such as us being the customers of the vendors here. We're talking about the direction being we are the business selling to customers. So these are going to be our customers and we've got the documentation related to the customers. So we have the same process that we want to think about with regards to the customers cycle or the sales cycle or the accounts receivable cycle. These are different names for the same kind of processes that we will then have in that we want to be able to visualize what the process will be. We want to be able to visualize the forms that will be in there. That's going to be the data input forms. And then take each of those forms and think about what the impact of inputting the documentation for those forms will be on our major financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the income statement, otherwise known as QuickBooks calls it, the profit and loss or P&L report. To do that, I'm going to go to the desktop version just to look at the flowchart. So we're only, the only reason we're over here is to look at the flowchart. You don't need this version or anything. We just want to look at this flowchart, which basically has the same forms in the online version and just has this pictorial format in order for us to see it a little bit more clearly. Then we just need to take a look at these same forms that'll be in that drop down list and then consider them. So our idea here is in the customer section, and remember, you might visualize this section for or think about it in different terminology. If you look at the home page, it's going to be listed under the customer section because obviously we sell to customers. It also involves the accounts receivable. So if you work at a, at a larger company, you're going to spend a lot of time managing the money that is owed to you. And you'll probably call it the accounts receivable cycle. But you also might call it the sales cycle. Sales, another word oftentimes used for revenue. And because obviously this is going to be at the revenue generation cycle as we sell to customers, or you might simply call it the revenue cycle as well. Now, there's going to be a difference in terms of different types of industries as to what the full cycle will look like. So if you have a full accrual process, then you'll typically have the full invoicing process, then receiving payments, and then you're going to be making the deposit. If, however, you make the sale at the same point in time as the work is done, we might have just the create the sales receipt and then making the deposit. And if we do something that's very kind of straightforward or basic in terms of like gig work or something like that, where we get the deposit, we actually record the deposit and the, and the revenue when it clears the bank, maybe, then we're just going to record basically the deposit and we're going to record revenue at that point in time. So let's go from the easiest process to the more complex process that might take place. The easiest kind of setup on the revenue side would be something like the gig work. If we had gig work and we work for, say, say Amazon, we sell slot like books on Amazon or something like that, or audio books, or we have courses that we sell, or we get revenue from YouTube, or we get revenue from something like that, and we wait till the thing actually clears the bank until we record it, then we're not only on a cash basis, but we're also just basically depending on the bank uh, in order to populate our information. And that's a, that's a basis that would be the easiest thing to use on the deposit side for bank feeds as well. And in that system, basically, we would be recording the deposit when it clears the bank and just recording revenue at that point in time. That would be like the easiest system that you can have, but you can only have that easy system if you're in an industry that supports basically, you know, that easy type of, of system to be setting up. If on the other hand, let's say you're in like a restaurant situation, where you collect the money at the same point in time that you provide the goods or services. You provide the food and let's say you, you basically collect cash or credit card at that point in time. You're not going to invoice the client. You're getting paid at that point in time. In that case, then you're basically going to have to record the sales receipt. You can imagine basically a register being set up, a register type of situation where you would record the sale. You would provide the receipt you know, for the sale. And then the money that is collected during that time period 
you're going to have to then deposit it, right? You're going to have to take the money, some of it possibly being cash. You're going to have to deposit it to the bank. Now, in that system, you're probably not going to want to wait till it clears the bank in order to record it because what you want to do is, is use the bank as a double check. So you're going to make your sales all day long and then you're going to have the deposits flow through either, either cash, credit card, or both in some way, shape, or form to the bank statement then you will already have something recorded in the system on our books and we'll have to tie that out to what gets recorded on the bank statement, meaning we'll have to do a reconciliation type of process uh, in some way, shape, or form. So you're still kind of on a cash basis in this system, but you can't really rely so much on something clearing the bank before you record it. You'd rather probably use that double checking process so that your sales see that your sales match up to what the deposits are going to be matching up uh, when they clear the bank. We'll talk more about that uh, in the future uh, as we go through our practice problem and go through these forms. And then the full service process would be something that might be used for like a bookkeeper or a lawyer or something like that where we have to do the work first. So first we do the work and then we're going to get um, we're, we're, we're going to get paid at a later point in time. We do the work, we bill the client, which is called an invoice here for QuickBooks. The invoice means we're billing the client we're sending an invoice the bill to them the bill means for quickbooks that is someone else a vendor that's sending a bill to us so an invoice means us doing work for like a law firm or you can imagine a, a bookkeeping firm we did the work and then we're issuing the invoice which is the bill in essence to the client that we are going to be sending it to then we'll have to track the accounts receivable and uh, and be collecting on the receivable and then we're going to make the deposit uh, once we have collected on it. So the full service cycle is going to be kind of like the most complex cycle. And it's the, it's the one that's a little bit, the, you know, the most difficult one to tie into, say, how the bank feeds are going to work. Because you cannot rely simply on the bank transaction. You have to tie in the bank transaction to the invoice in some way, shape, or form. So that's going to be basically the full cycle process. So you kind of want to visualize that, that flow that's going to be happening. And then uh, we'll go into more depth on each of these transactions, each of these forms, which are in essence data input forms. And each one of them will have an impact on, uh, on the financial statements. So quick recap here. If you're going to have to bill the client, if you're like a law firm or a CPA firm, you do the work first and then you have to bill the client. You're going to receive payment at some point in the future because you have to build the timeout or something like that. Then you're going to enter something like an invoice that's going to record the accounts receivable and then the sales at that point in time. Then you're going to receive the payment somehow recording the payment that has been received. And then this one's a little bit tricky because we, we might put it into something called undeposited funds. And this is something if, if you've learned traditional kind of bookkeeping in like a school type setup, uh, we haven't really, you haven't really seen the undeposited funds because you don't deal with when you're just looking at journal entries, the logistical problem of reconciling the, the bank statement uh, and how that kind of can get messed up when, when you have the deposits that are going into the bank account that differ in a different format or they're deposited in a different grouping on the bank statement as in the books. So this step often kind of confuses people in that if you're going to be depositing multiple checks or multiple uh, payments to the, uh, to the bank, then we want to basically put this into like a, a clearing account, which we're going to call undeposited funds. And that will basically be, again, decreasing the accounts receivable and then going into this cash account, but it's undeposited funds, not the checking account. And then we're going to go to the checking account and deposit it. Our goal in the checking account then on that added step is to group our deposits together so that they will be shown on the bank statement in the same grouping as they will be shown on our books so that when we do the bank reconciliation or match it up to the bank feeds possibly, then it'll be easy to do. And then the second kind of business, if we, if we collect cash at the same point, you're thinking about a business with a cash register or something like that where you're collecting the money and possibly have cash sales involved in credit card sales at the same time the good or service is being provided, then once again, you're gonna collect the money here at that point in time, provide the sales receipt, which is gonna increase sales, and then it's gonna increase most likely, once again, this undeposited funds, because it's not going into the checking account yet, although it's basically cash. If we have cash sales, we're gonna gather that cash together then at the end of the day, uh, typically end of the day if possible, we wanna do it every day, go to the bank, 
and then make the deposit, put all that cash into the bank, all those sales that are that were individual sales grouped together, basically, when we make the deposit into one uh, grouping and make sure that we make the grouping the same. Uh, so it'll show up on the bank statement as the same as that they'll be in our books for the reconciliation. And then there's kind of the easiest process, whereas gig work or something like that, someone pays us like online, we've got YouTube revenue or, or course revenue from different platforms or uh, you know revenue from audiobooks or something like that and we just wait till it clears the bank <laughs> and you know and then we go in there and and make uh, the deposit when it clears uh, when it clears the bank that would be the easiest process and again for the for the revenue side of things if you're turning on the bank feeds and you want it as automated as possible that kind of system can be easier to to automate so those are the primary uh, forms that we will be taking a look at and this is the flow chart that you want to be considering or visualizing also just note that this deposit form over here you can see it's in the banking section uh, even though you got this arrow so they're trying to say that hopefully most of the deposits are coming from customers but obviously you could have deposits for other reasons we might have a deposit for us the owner putting money in just investing money into our business or a loan or something like that for the deposit so uh, that's why it's kind of over here but then if then once we have this visualization in our mind then you want to go into this drop down and you have the same kind of thing customers that's going to be the revenue cycle sales cycle we got the invoice that would be increasing the accounts receivable for like a bookkeeper or a law firm we've got the receive payment which would be what happens next after we have the invoice we would then get paid an estimate is something that would be specialized to particular industries that are going to make an estimate before they issue kind of the invoice then we've got the uh, credit memo now this is something that if someone basically you have to you know they return something or something like that then you're going to have the credit memo which will basically kind of reverse it's kind of a reversal uh, of the invoice so we'll we'll talk about that as well but it's less common hopefully <laughs> than the other items and then the sales receipt that's like the cash register if you make the sale at the same point in time you receive the payment those are the major forms you want to have kind of a visualization of and then next time we'll go into each of these forms and take a look at them and see what the impact of them will be on the financial statements so then you always want to then be able to visualize the flow what are the forms that are going to happen in the flow and then what's the impact on the financial statements meaning which accounts so there's going to be at least two every time with every form uh, which two accounts or more are going to be affected uh, with each of these forms as we do the data input for them